Well, good day. Here we are on the C-Suite Network Women's Coaching and Consulting Council. We're so excited. Our, our theme today is power. And so we're going to look at 47 minutes or less because the number 47 means spiritual awakening. Who Ooh. knew? Who knew? 47, because we're all ready for an awakening, aren't we? Especially if, like me, this is your fourth Zoom call already today, and you've loved every second of every Zoom call you've had. Okay. So there we go. We need our power, right? Yes. So let's just jump in. And you know, we are here to serve coaches, consultants, trusted advisors, thought leaders, and we're here to serve you. And we also believe in our council that when we serve women, we serve men, communities, children, and the world. So that's part of our mission. So let's jump in because I value you and your time. Absolutely. So here we go. Let's just jump into our program. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. And everyone can see, you know, that's kind of like next to um, uh, you're on mute. The our can you see is always on the on the uh, on the minds of us. Good. Thank you. So this week's success summit is so important because what I've noticed is there's an opportunity for each of us to own our power, own our presence, own profits, own our success. If we are to be coaching and consulting in the fullest self of ourself, we've got to be owning our power. And I believe that when we own our power, we help our clients own it as well. So if you agree with that little premise there, give me some sparkle fingers. Yay. Thank you. So our program is all about power today. Today's the theme of our power. And by the way, I also like to say I'm modeling a business modality or framework that you can use. This is a little bit of a challenge. So think about how you can, you know, we're parallel processing here, sisters. We're learning some distinctions that maybe you already know, but I'm reinforcing to you that what you already know, because you're all masters. That's how we come to our council. We're all masters. And thinking also at the same time, but like, listen, hmm, Kathleen, I could use this for my business, you know, as a way to engage a community and to bring forth our gifts. So that's how I roll. As you all know, I'm Kathleen Caldwell, founder of C-Suite Networks Women's Coaching and Consulting Council. I am a trusted advisor. I lead the Women's Success Accelerator, co-author with Stephen Covey and Ken Blanchard in a beautiful book called Blueprint for Success, speaker, lover of all things ballroom dancing with my beloved husband, Michael Caldwell, and a lover of all of you. So thank you. We are doing this program because we're celebrating. This is, we don't, we don't just celebrate for one day in our council. We celebrate for four or five days. That's how we operate here. Tomorrow, as you know, is International Women's Day. It's always on the eighth day of May. And so with that, I was pon pondering back in December, what is it that we could use as a boost? You know, we're coming out of COVID, we're coming from winter into spring, and what would be something that would be inspiring? And the idea of owning it, it just came to mind. And so taking the first idea that was a download to me, I wanted to do this multiple day summit. So today is all about owning your power. Tomorrow, Sheila Anderson, our esteemed faculty member, is going to talk about how do you own your presence your presence on the camera, your presence in the marketplace, your brand, so that people know you, like you, trust you, and ultimately hire you. So you have a beautiful business that's a freedom business filled with your most ideal, great, awesome clients. And so if you'd like more of that, give me some sparkle fingers. Yes, yes. This is sometimes the only form of exercise we can get for our lats and our biceps and triceps. So we can do this. Yes. Okay. So today is about power. Tomorrow is about presence. Thursday, we're talking about success. So I'm going to unfold you into this conversation, each of you. This will be interactive in 47 minutes or less. And then finally, this week, we get to feature our new CEO of C-Suite Network, Trisha Ben. So excited. She's going to bring us all home to how important profits are for our business and for ourselves that we can create more current in our currency. So we're so excited about seeing Trisha and of course, Sheila Anderson. So just wondering, you know, I like to start out with a definition because power can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. Uh, I will just share with you very quickly that the beautiful landscapers outside of my home 
decided today was the most perfect day and today was the most perfect time to chip up the branches from the trees that had fallen from an ice storm. And so literally, I kid you not, six minutes ago, the chipper started outside of my door. So I stopped and thought, okay, I can wait until they stop or I can use my power, my will, my energy to walk outside and politely ask them, please move the truck. I have a broadcast in five minutes and I so appreciate you doing that. Well, delightfully they did. So we're not hearing the chipper in the background, okay? So this is a demonstration for me of power. If we have power that is not used or it's underused or it's leaking or losing power, we are not living to our fullest. So just curious if one of you would like to read our definition of power. Feel free, jump in, unmute yourself. We want to get your voice in the conversation. I'll be happy to do that for you. Susan, thank you. Love that. So power is a noun, the ability to do something or act in a particular way, the capability or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events. Excellent. So thinking of that definition, I'm just curious, is there a word or phrase in this description? This just came from online, uh, I think it was Webster's or some sort of uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary. What is there something in this definition of power that really speaks to you? I think the word influence is, is mm. something that is, is so important. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I, the, I agree. That's the piece that jumps out the most to me. Deb, you nailed it. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Linda, any uh, topics that come to you? Any particular parts of this power conversation or definition that speak to you? <laughs> um, no, actually, influence was exactly where my eye was uh, drawn as well. Amazing. Well, I would say the, the other one, maybe just to, for something different was um, my ability. Mm. So it's my ability to do something. It's not relying on someone else. Great. Great. Very nice. And I'm so delighted this morning that I was able to coordinate our PowerPoint slides with your beautiful top. So there we go. <laughs> yes. You. That's, you know, that's just how we are in our council. We want to have elegance as well and connection. Yes. So feel free to jump in. Anybody else if you have any comments? But, you know, isn't that beautiful ability, meaning able, you know, willing and able and influence. So power, it's a, I think it's a very mis understood word. And that's why I wanted to start with our definition. So thank you. And, you know, there are a lot of different points of view about power. And, you know, I think that I came to this and I've always thought about power that sometimes power, especially with women, you know, is we've not perhaps had such a great experience with power. If you can relate, yes, yes, yes. With power. Um, I think that, that sometimes power means in some circles, controlling, manipulating, overbearing, power hungry. Oh my gosh, you don't ever want to have that term uh, laid on you, right? Ha ha. Or with power, it's like a win-lose kind of situation. If I am overpowering you, I win, you lose, yuck. Or just kind of a negative connotation. And this whole thing about, I have the power, I am the, the mighty here. Very very a uh, lot of different views about power and of course if you have something to say on this you know feel free jump in um i so i want to yeah i want to reinvent this whole term power yes our perception susan please linda jump in as well so i think the thing that comes up for me is if you've read the book power versus force you start yes. to understand energetically that power is a positive helping to lift where force is a mm. pushing down and that, that lifting with power versus pushing down with force becomes a beautiful way to look at it from that positive aspect. How brilliant. And certainly I would know that you would read Dr. David Hawkins, Power for Versus Force. You know, uh, you could certainly have been even cited in that book as an expert. So thank you, Susan. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Very nice. Yeah, power over versus, as we're going to talk about in a moment, you know, power with, moving force, ability, and influence. Yes. Linda, you were going to jump in as well. 
Well, I would say um, these actually ring true for me in corporate America. And, and I feel like this was what was modeled. Yes. For, for by my men, and I'm not a man basher at all, but I mean, I've been on Wall Street and I've been the only woman in the corporate room. And so that, and I also feel like these were terms that were placed on women when we tended to exert our power, not in a negative way, but just when we were exerting, all of a sudden we were overbearing or we were controlling. And it was a very fine line to walk. Boy, and doesn't that take a lot of energy to be able to determine what's the line, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, and to kind of follow on that, there's another word that often comes in, um, and that's the <laughs> B word. You know, we we tend to be that, <clears throat> you know, because people are saying, well, you know, she is manipulative. She's controlling. She's a, hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And great points that you're bringing up. And so, you know, the theme today, I I believe also is in owning it, owning our power is really recognizing as we're going to talk about in just a, a just a quick moment here is what's power mean to you and you know what is it i wanted to provide the contrast to what we've heard and societal you know kind of norms and kind of all this type of thing and i think as young women i know i was told you know you're too much you're always too much you know you're just you're too loud you're just too much all the time and so i know at an early age my voice, my power was kind of, you know, smushed a little bit. You know, I felt like I had to put marshmallows around me or eat them, <laughs> you know, to kind of tamper my power. Yeah. How many of you can relate to that, that your power at an early age, you know, was, was maybe questioned or demeaned or all of that? You can relate to that, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice. So let's reinvent power for ourselves as powerful women. So I'm just curious, we got the definition, we kind of looked at a couple models about what is power been meant traditionally, you know, from the B word all the way to the overbearing to the too much to all of that. What do you think power means for you? And, and what I'm hoping to do today, and I plan to do is that we'll leave with an essence for your own definition of power that maybe you write down or maybe you you know type in your computer or something that will leave with okay this is where i want to go from today march 7th 2023 forward this is my own definition of power yes so some thoughts about power what does it mean to you yeah susan please mm -hmm. it's it's that energy force that mm -hmm. helps to motivate me for good. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And Susan, would you also say that you know in the times when you know you you're you're in it, and then there are times that, and we'll talk about this in a moment, but that maybe it's not so present for you. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. We all yeah. have those moments where we're like, "Where did it go? Yeah, it exactly. has escaped me," and I am in need of recharging and yes. that's why to me that power is that almost like the electricity of our lives Ooh. that's tweetable susan we're going to give you credit for that that's awesome yeah yeah very good yes thank you who else what what does power mean to you because you know if we don't name it or and claim it for ourselves it's going to be this el elusive kind of attribute or feeling or you know it when you see it but how can we claim it and own it? Yeah, thanks. Linda, would you like to jump in? Deb, jump in. And of course, Brenda, anytime we want to welcome your voice in the conversation. Yeah. What is it? What does power mean to you? Deb, could I come to you first? Because you are the founder of the Business Power Hour podcast. So yeah, exactly. Um, 820... 853 episodes. Um you know, it's it's interesting how, you know, the Business Power Hour came about because originally it was the Socialite and it was a program where I went into a radio station in Denver and we talked about social media. This was long enough ago that this was when social media was first being used. And, and so we, we brought this in 
And then, you know, after a couple of years of that, there's only so long you can talk about um, social media. So I thought, you know, we, and, and especially women, but, you know, men also, we don't, you know, we don't always know the power that we have and, and what it takes to, to do that. And so, you know, I, the business power hour, to be honest, it was a name that was available. Nobody else was. And I was really surprised that there were no other podcasts or radio programs that were using the business power hour, because to me, it was just kind of a natural thing. And, and there is uh, another program uh, that is, is that name and, and that's okay. They're, they're doing fabulous. But um, to me, it's about taking that time is kind of going back to what Susan was saying and focusing the hour on learning and increasing our knowledge, increasing our influence, because that's what's happening with my guests. Um, And so it really is about how do we harness the energy, harness the power to be successful in business. Oh, awesome. Very, very nice. Congratulations. And we'll do a shout out for your, your podcast and also for your new movement, Trying Not to Die, Die, uh, yeah. Live, mm-hmm. which is power, all mm-hmm. about power, isn't it? Yep, most definitely. It's it's about, uh, you know, long story short, for those who haven't heard, it's it's about empowering those who are dealing with cancer to, you know, whether they're the, the patient or someone supporting them um, to uh, take charge and, and be in control of your treatment of your life um, and making sure that, you know, a week, a month, 20 years, that you are the one who is in charge. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Reclaiming our power, isn't it? And so much mm-hmm. more. Yes. Beautiful. Congratulations. Big shout out to C-Suite Network, C-Suite mm-hmm. Network Radio. You host your podcast. It's yep. really great. Yeah. That's good. Fabulous. Great. Thank you. Examples of power. Linda, any uh, comments about what does power mean to you before we move forward? Well, thanks for asking, Kathleen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I come back to the definition. It's the ability to influence. Yeah. And to me, that leaves a lot of uh, latitude. Yes. As to how we choose to implement that. Yes. And um, so I think um, we can do it in a supportive um, empowering way, or like you were talking about, we can be more the controlling domineering type, which I think is very old school and don't, don't want to go there. (laughs) Right. Right. Yes. Thank you. Very good. And of course the timeless Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people is really all about power, isn't it? And it's not about being a sycophant, you know, uh, about, you know, buttering up people for the sake of buttering them up. I believe it's all about true connection, as we'll talk about here in a moment, is power is really about one plus one equals three. So that's how we roll in our council. So, you know, the thing is, so we know power, influence and ability, we know it. I'm sure you've all had seen great examples in your life of people who are powerful and didn't lose their power, you know, and, and essentially we're not looking to copy them. You know, we don't want to be a poser or copycat, but kind of looking at like, what was the essence of their power? How did they use power responsibility? How did they use power to not to be overpowering and put people down, but perhaps to use power to lift people up. And I I look forward to a world where we have more people like each of you doing that kind of thing. And at the same time, I know that for me, and I think perhaps for each of you, and you're watching the broadcast, by the way, we're so grateful. We're now about 55,000 views and clicks. So excited about that. So we're very happy about the growth of our council because you know this is all about us holding on and increasing and supporting each other in our, in our power. But the reality is oftentimes we lose power you know, literally, you know, around our grid and around the United States, we've all experienced, hey, I lost my power. Well, okay. Uh, But I'm curious for each of you losing your power. I know that I have, I lose my power and I'm going to put a couple examples up to kind of cue us up here because I know these are the common ways that I lose my power. Uh, Comparison, you know, looking at what other people are doing in the marketplace and saying, oh God, I wish only I was doing that or blah, 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 or why can't I, 
you know, kind of a comparison of better than, not better than. So comparison, I lose my power and it has an energy about it. It's not, it's kind of yucky. It's not great. Overthinking and overdoing is a loss of power for me, for sure. If I'm not feeling well, I don't have my energy. I don't have my focus and my purpose. If I've gotten off track, certainly my power is gone. And the other thing too, as coaches, consultants, trusted advisors, thought leaders, things like, oops, things like um, undercharging, oh my goodness, or undervaluing ourselves. Mm -hmm. Those are very, very common and not speaking up. You know, like this morning's example, thank goodness for this example of inside of me, I felt this energy, like I must go out there and speak up and make a request, but do it powerfully, politely, and professionally, but be very direct and be very clear. So I felt really good of like, my goodness, what a great example here. I get to go out and use my power to do this, but not be overbearing and not be appropriate. Leave the other person whole, complete, and clear about my request. So can you relate to any of mm -hmm. these areas, the comparison, overdoing, overthinking, undercharging, undervaluing, not speaking up? Maybe you can add to this list. I'm sure we could. Yeah. Where do you feel like you, you've lost your power in the past? Um, if I might. <clears throat> yeah, please. I'm go right ahead. Yeah. Listening to meditation on this, so it's perfect timing. Oh, perfect. Um, for me, it's when I lack confidence in myself. And um, the it was actually a, a podcast I was listening to. And it was uh, when we want to follow through on our big dream, it requires confidence, courage, and commitment. And I just really like that because I think it also has to do with, you know, losing our powers is when we don't believe in ourselves. So that's my two cents. Really very beautiful, Linda, what you're sharing. And I think that, um, you know, Susan will certainly, uh, you know, resonate with this as well is, you know, you know, in your experience is Susan with energy and how energy works. And I knew you have a beautiful history in Reiki and body work and all this beautiful, these modalities where it's all about energy is for me, it can become habitual patterns just because I didn't speak up that one time a while ago that makes me kind of hesitate to speak up again. It happened this morning. You know, it absolutely, to be completely forthright with you 50,000 people that are watching our broadcast. Um, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, and it's a combination of these happening at various times. You start comparing yourself to somebody else. So you start undervaluing what your additional comment would mean. And sometimes it's the simple thing that you are thinking that unlocks something for them. And they may be so overwhelmed in their own world that they aren't hearing it until you say it. And we hold back thinking, oh, that's not enough. You know, we, we do it to ourselves in so many ways. And energetically, you can feel, are you connected in a room? Mm. And if you don't feel connected in a room, you will frequently do that thing that shuts you down instead of stepping into what is the beauty and uniqueness of yourself that really brings you forward. And yeah, yeah, you can feel it. Yeah, so well said, Susan. And really I'm hearing po power is the whole thing about it, you know, mm -hmm. is <clears throat> losing power or, uh, or increasing our power and our voice and our energy. Really great, thank you, love and that. And the other part of it is when we come together collectively and play off of each other's power in a positive way, you can feel it grow. Yeah. You can feel it strengthen each of us. And that's very much what Deb is doing with her Try Not to Die and how she mm -hmm. is creating support and wisdom for others who are finding it difficult to show up because of what they're experiencing. And they don't want to be pitied. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be looked at as damaged goods. They want to be seen for everything they are outside of what they are experiencing. And she's really doing a great job of creating a spot for them to gather and feel supported at every step along the way. So Deb, you have incredible 
power and strength in what you were providing for everyone. Thank well, you. Thank you. Um, it, you know, checks in the mail. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's true, but, but absolutely 100% yeah, true. You know, and, but, you know, as I was thinking about all this, one of the things that I was thinking was the I'm not worthy, the imposter syndrome, you know, that, you know, and, and I think part of it is because we don't think we're enough mm. and we are enough, you know, and, and, you know, we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to others. Yeah, we're going to overthink it partially, I think, because we're women, you know, we're just going to make sure that every T is crossed and I's are dotted and, and you know, all of those things. Um, I think we definitely undercharge and undervalue ourselves. And that comes back to the, why would somebody want to pay me that much to do, you know, do whatever. And, you know, definitely not speaking up. Um, you know, I was the kid in school that was always being told, sit down, shut up, sit down, shut up. Um you know, and, and that was when teachers could do that and, and say that, and, you know, they didn't get in trouble. But, you know, that to me, there's another thing that goes along with this. And, and the, that word was respect, mm. because I think, you know, someone loses their power when we lose respect for them. You know, maybe it's something that they've done or didn't do, you know, all these things. I mean, just look at when, you know, somebody posts something on social media or does something and, and we immediately lose respect for them. And then they no longer have that power. Um, so I think that's part of, you know, we have to always be conscious of the fact that, that what we do matters mm -hmm. and we don't want to lose someone's respect. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Very well said. And, you know, I, what I'm also hearing too is out of all of your sharing is the impact, you know, that influence and that ability that we have you know, looking to others, of course, but my goodness, I think that we've got that for ourselves and for our communities as well. And so people look to us, we look to others for power, but, but I know for each of you, people look to you for your power. You'd agree with that. It's a very subtle thing. And we may not even know the impact of our power on others, the small things that we do or mm -hmm. don't do. I, what I know for sure is in this hypersensitive world, uh, everyone's watching all the time. So I don't want to use that as a, for me, an opportunity to, you know, be, be worried or consumed um, with looking good and all that nonsense. Um, but we try to look good. You know, we try to dress up for each other, look pretty for ourselves and others. Yeah, so of course, but, but we know the difference. And, you know, the, the term that I've always loved, and I have to find out how I can give attribution, but time either promotes us or exposes us. I use that a lot, you know, and I think it's so true and it's with our power that time is the great equalizer. It's either promoting us to who we truly are and, you know, our authenticity, or it's exposing us and others to, you know, to what may be their truth. So yeah. And granting people a lot of grace. We always do that as well. So good. Okay. So power again, still thinking about for us, what it is for, what is it for us? And of course, the key as we finalize our program today and we move into a completion is how will we own our power? You know, we know it when we have it, we can feel it, we can sense it. We know we're in that flow, in that zone of power. But the next key question is, you know, quantifying it, what are the occasions when we know we've been in our power? What are we doing? What are we thinking? What are we feeling? How are we activating that power? But then also knowing that we're not in our power, we're not in the flow and the energy, you know, what's happening? I frequently, I do this a lot of times during the day is I feel energetically like hmm, something doesn't feel right. Something feels a little off. And so I personally stop, pause, and stop and think, okay, what was the thing that just happened that has, has my energy changed? How was I influenced by something, a thought of feeling an outside or an inside kind of thing? So it's really an interrupt to my power. So what just happened that has me lose power, okay? Where the circuit got switched and I have to flip back on, got to go to the circuit breaker and got to flip the power back on. So how do you, how will you, after our, our brief time together, think about owning your power, owning it, okay? 
And I'm gonna, we'll do some completion here in a moment with takeaways and some ideas. But I also wanna say that the real secret, we've alluded to this the entire time we've been together now, the real secret I think is power together, not power over. Yeah, it's having power together, holding hands, collaboration and connection. And I have a new term that I'm uh, trademarking called co-acceleration. How do we lock arms together and accelerate the things that are important to us? So there we go. So power together. And then as we complete, just wondering what's important for you about this whole concept, what's emerging for you. And uh, I'll just take us off of uh, the slides and jump back on in a moment just to complete, but just wondering what's <laughs> emerging for you around your power. How do you think you'll take this away from our time together today? Well, in record time, ladies, yeah, record time. I know. Wow, look at this. You know, I think Susan definitely alluded to it in that, you know, we we kind of owe it to everybody to own our power and share it with others, you know, whether it's our message, um, you know, because people want to hear our message uh, it, and it can be personal, it can be business, it can be whatever. Um, but, you know, when we hold back, we're actually hurting them, um, you know, and, and so it's okay to be doing that as long as, you know, we're doing it with, as you said, you know, grace, you know, we're, we're not jumping in and fixing things. None of us like that when that happens. Right. Um, but it's, it's very much, you know, that, that it's, it is something that we need to share. Um, and, you know, whether we're sharing the power, sharing the wisdom, whatever it is, you know, it, it's, it's just what we are supposed to be doing. Absolutely agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. That's so great. Yes, Susan, please. That. And and what I think has to be considered is you're sharing without expectation. Mm. Because Gorgeous. as you share it with them, it is their choice to embrace it or go not not required at this moment. Uh, I already have that in a different framework. Whatever it is, is a, a genuine sharing because of your ability to see how it works for you without a forcing them to see it as something that works for them as they may be coming at it from a whole different perspective and need. And right. I think that's the, the synergy that mm -hmm. power creates when handled in that proper fashion that Deb was talking about. And that when we openly do those things and, and let people know that we are there in support of a community in support of the individuals in the community, not at a purpose of bettering ourselves, but also not at a purpose of diminishing ourselves in those moments. Yeah, it beautiful. is standing strong in what we have to contribute and recognizing that it is ours. It is not necessarily theirs. We are willing to share it. Beautifully said, beautifully said. Thank you. And that's really who you're about and what you're about, Susan. You are just, you're, you are a power transmitter. You're a power connector. You are a power amplifier. You really are in a relationship architect for sure. Thank you. Good, good. Linda, parting words before we complete thoughts about power for yourself. Some takeaways from our time together. Yeah, this was great. Thank you so much, Kathleen and Deb and Susan. Appreciate your input. Um, and Brenda, you were quiet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so this is this is really interesting because it's um, a topic I've been dwelling on. Hmm. But I find that um, I exhibit my power in a positive way when I'm following my purpose, Ooh, and when I am sharing um, what I'm called to share on this earth. Yes. And so I love, you know, the supporting and coming from a place of um, collaboration. And I always say, I loved this mental picture. It's what, how I, 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 my goal in life is to coach women so that they, their starting point is my shoulders. Mm -hmm. So they are being elevated and, and can go forward and take it to the next level. So um, thank you. Thank you for your insight on power and just how we can really use it to move this world forward. 
I love you, that, you. you know, standing on the shoulders. That's just wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful. Such great sharing. Very, very nice. So let's complete our time. And uh, what a gorgeous program we've had today. I am so inspired by everything that you've said. This is so beautiful. So thank you. And, you know, thinking about what our council is all about. I mean, we are all about power because we know that together we can promote you, showcase and highlight you and give you a platform. Hello, the shoulders to stand on, Linda. Thank you. To rise and shine. The world needs our light. We, we, we've got to bring our light out there. And one of my big goals is to get at least 8 billion people on the planet coached. Okay. So we got a lot of work to do, ladies. We got a lot of work to do, 8 billion people on the planet. And so we've got a lot of coaching up to do, but you know, this program today and for the whole week is really about for us. How do we own our power, our purpose, our presence, profits, and success? Because the more filled up we are, the more energy and power we have, the more we can serve the world. So questions about our council, questions about next steps, feel free. I'm so easy to reach on Calendly. It's Kathleen Caldwell. Jump on my calendar. Love to have a conversation with you about you, your life, your business, and how you can have more power in your life and your business. So tomorrow's program, as we finish up here, we are so excited. Tomorrow's International Women's Day. Sheila Anderson is our speaker tomorrow. She's a STEAM faculty member. She's talking about presence and branding. Oh my goodness. You know she's going to bring it. She's going to bring the power to the whole concept of presence. How do we stand out in the world with our authenticity, authenticity, our light, our brightness, and how do we differentiate ourselves? Ourself? Sheila is a master at that. She's going to be talking tomorrow and Wednesday. And then, of course, Thursday, we're talking about owning your success. I think I'm going to let Sheila in right now. Oh, my goodness. And I'll pop back. Sheila is talking tomorrow. And then, of course, Friday, tomorrow's success, owning your success. What's in the way of success for you? How are you defining success? What's in the way? How can you move through the things that are in the way that are blocking you from your true success? Friday. Trisha Ben is talking about how to own your profits and how to just own everything in your life. And so Sheila, so glad you're here. Thank you. Very, very nice. Yeah. Sorry. I'm late. Had to take my dad to the doctor. So oh. just, just got back in. So happy, yes. happy to be here. Oh, we're so glad that you're here. Um, I want to go back and um, share. We had a beautiful slide about you speaking tomorrow and uh we're so excited for you to talk about presence wow. presence yeah yeah so do, would you like to do a, a very brief kind of overview about what you're going to talk about tomorrow well we're going to talk about your presence um how you're putting yourself together just not only in person but how you're showing up online how you're showing up on zoom um, at networking events. So just lots of little tips and tricks uh, for you. So it'll be, it'll be wonderful. You'll walk away with a few key strategies. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And boy, we want to look in the camera and feel really good about the presence and the power we're putting forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Good. So as we complete, just curious, like a one word, you know how we do this? We just do like a one word or one sentence takeaway for yourself from our time together, because we're completing at 47 after the hour. Spiritual awakening is the meeting of 47, right? Good. Yeah. Thank you. One word takeaway or phrase. I'm feeling more powerful, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Empowered. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Energized. Excellent. Susan, thank you. Energize. Yes. Thank you. Linda, Sheila, we're just, Sheila, we're so glad that you're here. Thank you. You just brought the power right here. Thank you. Yeah. Linda, curious about your takeaway. And of course, Brenda, we always want to get your voice on here as well. Uh, the word that comes to me is influential. Yeah. Beautiful. That's great. Part of our definition. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Sheila, any uh, additional sharing for you? 
Oh my God. I am, I am just so excited. I can't wait to watch the replay of what you shared because you, it's always so good and so relevant, right? As, and especially now as we're celebrating women's, you know, women's history month. Uh, so super excited about that, but just having, um, you know, I've talked about this before, but having that calming confidence that we all need when we're, when we're showing up or when we're interacting with others. So beautiful. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. Thank I you. I love Taylor. that Brenda just put enlightened. Yes, yeah. exactly. Love right. It. Love it. Bringing the light. Yeah. Bring our power and bringing the essence and the truth about who you are to the world. We want more of that. Okay, ladies, the replay will be up within 24 hours. Can't wait to see you. Same place, same time tomorrow. Sheila Anderson is our speaker. Bring a friend. Woo! Yeah, very good. Lots of love to each of you. Bring power. You. The world's waiting. Okay, lots of love to you. Bye-bye.